Okay, um, what we're going to look at in this session is putting tables into Composer. We've looked at using Dreamweaver in class. Um, it's a very similar process. If you want to practice at home, um, you can try it with Composer instead. So before we start, I've got a folder full of images that I've prepared already. And you'll notice as my mouse is rolling over them, dimension sizes are coming up and they're all 480 pixels wide. So if I just I'll pick the Beatles Tower and double click on it. You should be able to see if I come over here, look at the size, I've made my, that 480 wide. And the reason is I want it to come halfway across my web page, okay, with text taking the other half of the page up. So if I just come out of that, close that down, and you also notice I've made my banner. If you look at this, this is 960 wide. Okay, so if we just zoom in here and get the details. So that's 960 dots wide. So that's twice twice the width of the pictures. And the reason this is 960 wide is that on most peop people's computer screens, you can assume, and this will change over time as people get better and better monitors, but you can assume that from this point on the screen here on the left-hand side, all the way across to the far right-hand side of the screen, that most people have got something that's about... 1024 pixels wide from there to there. Now the trouble is when you open a web browser you have stuff like the scroll bars at the side and the frame around it and what have you. So what happens is you lose a few pixels. So what we do is we take that and we say okay as a safe bet let's make sure all our web pages are 960 pixels wide which probably comes from about there to there. So we give ourselves a bit of slack by, decide, by defining our website as being that wide. And to do that, what I've done, I say I've gone to my banner and I've made my banner 960 wide and that's going to govern the size of the web page. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's come over to Composer. Um, now I should point out that my screen at the moment is only 800 pixels wide to allow you to see things a bit more clearly, but I'll change it at the end, um, at the relevant moment, so you can see uh, the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a website as normal. So click on this little symbol. If you're in Dreamweaver, it's site, define site at the top of the screen. And I'm going to come in here, desktop, modern Manchester. So that's the folder with all my pictures in it. Call it anything I like click OK. So you should be able to do that fairly straightforward now. And if I click on the little arrow on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see all those pictures that we were looking at a minute ago are all in here. Now, what we've got at the moment is if I take the, not using tables, but if I take the modern Manchester banner and drop it in there. OK. And then what I'm going to do, I say yours will be the full width of the screen. Um, and then I'm going to get a picture. So let's get a picture of the Trafford Centre. Drop that in there. If it's gone in the wrong place. Just get rid of it. So just get me flashing cursor in the right place this time. Trafford Centre, pop it in there. Okay, so we should be able to see that we've got the banner at the top that runs all the way across. Okay, and I've got a picture of the Trafford Centre. That's pretty much what we've been doing so far. Um, if I want to, I can see what that looks like in the web browser. So I'll click on Browse. Do I want to save it? Yes, I do. So let's give it a title. Um, if you're doing this in Dreamweaver, you just type it up at the top of the screen before you do this. But um, just call it Manchester call it anything we want. Where do we want to save it? And we always want to save it in the folder with all our pictures because we want to keep everything together because it's nice and neat and that's the only way your website will work in the end. So I open that folder up and because it's my first page, obviously call it index. Save. Okay, just click on browse again. Okay, so you can see that what we've got here is the banner, picture of the Trafford Centre. But if I wanted the Trafford Centre to appear over on this part of the screen here, I couldn't using this method because everything either aligns left or right, but we'd, we'd have all sorts of trouble. 
doing that. So what tables let us do is lay out a page so it looks more like what the web pages that we used to see in every day. So I'm just going to delete both of these. So delete that. So I'm just clicking on it, pressing delete on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add a table. Okay, so just at the top of the screen here, table, symbol, um, there's, a, there's a similar one in uh, Composer, uh, sorry, in Dreamweaver. So click on table, and you can chuck stuff in here, you can define how big the table is, but I'm going to suggest we go to precisely here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I want three rows going across. Okay, so I want a top row, middle row, and a bottom row. So I want three rows, and I want a number of columns, so a number of going down. I'm just going to have two. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to say how wide do I want this to be. So I'm going to say it's going to be 960 pixels wide. If you remember, that's how wide we want the website to be. That's how wide the banner is. And just make sure you do leave this on pixels, and you don't accidentally put it on percent or some, something like that. And the other thing, because it looks really nasty, uh, we just make sure the border is set to zero, otherwise the website looks very old fashioned. Okay, so we click OK, so I'll just zoom in on that so you can see those settings. Then click OK, and we should get a table that appears here on our main window. Um, now, because it's dot dotted, it means that you won't actually see this table, it's just there for our benefit. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, and if you've done tables in Microsoft Word, you'll know about merging cells together. It's because I want my banner to go all the way across. I don't need two boxes at the top. I don't need two cells. So I can just select both of those, and I can go to Table, Join Selected Cells. You can see that what's happened now is those two have been merged together into one big cell, which is 960 pixels wide, which means when I grab the banner, and just drop it into that cell, it should be a perfect fit all the way across. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a picture of the, um, of the Trafford Center, but I'm going to put it so it's on the right hand side of my screen here in this cell over here. So I come down, Trafford Center picture, drop it in, and you may find it goes a bit skew with. Okay. Now you'll see it's not where I want it to be. So if I was in Dreamweaver, what I would do is I would come over here and I would click on this vertical line and then I could click and drag it across. In Composer, we come up to the top here and there's a little grey bar here at the top of the screen. We use that instead in Composer. So you see that my cursor's changed to two arrows and I should just be able to which I'm on the right cell. And I should be able to just pull it across. And if I lose it I just click on the cell again just to reactivate it. You can see it's almost at the right hand side now. And there we go. So I've just pulled it across, just shunted it across in Composer. So you can see how I've got my page laid out now. Then I might say in this cell here, on the left hand side, again we wouldn't be able to do this using the other, the other methods, just the basic met methods, but now we could put some text into that cell. So I'm just going to click on the text file, um, find the text for the Trafford Center, and just edit, copy, come back to our Manchester site over here just by clicking on the tabs up here and edit, paste. You can see my text is now in there. I've got my picture on the left hand side. I can play around with the text if I want. So I can highlight it and say, OK, let's change its font. I can highlight this bit here and make it bigger and bold. Okay, and if I wanted to, I could change its colour. Yeah, so I can just simply play around with stuff. And you see it begins to look a lot more like a web page. So if I click on Browse Now, save it. 
and you can see it's beginning to look quite quite nice nicely laid out as a web page now obviously as I said earlier to make this easy for you to see I resize my screen down to only 800 dots wide 800 pixels wide so that's why it's going off the edge of the screen because what you're seeing there is from here on the left hand side all the way across to here is 800 dots but still got another 160 here to make up the 9, 960 that disappears off the edge of the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close that down and I'm going to resize my screen to a more traditional size okay which, so it's 1024 okay so what I've done is I've resized the screen so it's just over a thousand pixels wide so if I browse now we should see something more closely resembling what the average person will see when they come to have a look at your website okay so you can see it fits neatly on the screen all the way across it's nice nicely laid out clear and easy to read okay and that's all thanks to tables and the only thing to bear in mind is when you're designing your site if I bring up a graphic here for instance so just let me bring that full screen so we can see it okay if I'm defining a site all I know is I make my banner 960 pixels across all the way across there and then all I need to do then is make sure that everything else I design adds up to 960 so you can see I've got 710 there 250 there adds up to 960 all the way across and if you plan that out and then it's just a case of counting how many rows and columns you've got so I've got one two three rows and two columns okay and that's basically laying out your website using tables